Today, we press on with our 2022-2023 Dallas Stars player evaluations. And today, we are discussing Mason Marchman. His first season in Dallas was a roller coaster. Got off to a hot start, hit a wall in the middle of the season. But I believe that there's a reason for Stars fans to be excited about Mush's future in Big D. All of this coming up on today's episode of Locked on Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, coming to you on this Wednesday, June 14th. And this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more and visit fanduel.com slash locked on today to get started. And whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, Thank you for stopping by and making Locked on Stars your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to our show on YouTube or wherever you find your podcasts at. We are free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. And, of course, continuing to bring you off-season content throughout the summer uh, through the draft, free agency, trades, all the way up until training camp rolls back around, which it'll be here before you know it, even though it feels like we're still uh, a long ways away from the start of the next hockey season. But we're continuing on with our player evaluation series. And today we're talking about a player. I feel like we've discussed a lot of guys who have had way more positives than good. But I feel like now we're starting to get into some player territory of there's good things to talk about with these players. But there's also some criticism as well uh, and some areas uh, that need some major improvement for the next few seasons. And that certainly is the case with today's player, Mason Marchman, one of the newer members of the Dallas Stars organization who had you know a very very great previous season in florida with the panthers the team that won the president's trophy uh, and mason marchment a huge huge reason for that success not having to be the premier guy uh, but playing a really nice middle six depth scoring role for that panther squad uh, providing some excellent offense when you know when guys like barkov uh, or duclair or you know at the time uh, they had um, not not Matthew Kachuk, but before that trade for Jonathan Huberdeau, rather. The Kachuk and Huberdeau trade happened last summer, but Huberdeau, a huge reason for success in Florida as well. With Mason Marchment, who seemed to be the answer that the Dallas Stars and the fan base were looking for in terms of searching for a top six winger uh, to potentially play alongside Tyler Sagan on the Stars' second line. He was coming in with 47 points through 54 games the previous season with the Florida Panthers and Mason Marchment certainly did not have the greatest first season in Dallas. It was a little bit of a roller coaster year, but let's remember that he started off with an absolute bang. He scored the or two goals on opening night, scored the very first goal of the season for the Dallas stars was one of the best players against the predators in Nashville on opening night and collected a total of six points through his first four games of the regular season. Uh, a guy who was expected to come in and, again, be a depth player, a depth scorer, while guys like Hintz, Pavelski, Robertson, and even Sagan and, and you know Ben, to some extent, those were the guys who were expected to do the heavy lifting in terms of offense and scoring, but it seemed like they were going to be getting you know top-line-esque numbers from Mason Marchment based on the first few games of the season. Uh, he, of course, would eventually cool off, but even before the All-Star break, uh, a pretty consistent presence on the ice was Mason Marchman, a guy who wasn't always going to score goals or get points every single night, but you could count on some pretty solid contributions. A guy who likes to play with a little bit of speed and use his physicality to try and get under the opposition skin. He was a fun player to watch, especially when he was in the zone. There would just be games where you could tell that he was playing at a different level than normal and seemed to really elevate his game to being uh, you know, an arguably, you know, top three player or top forward rather uh, for not just the stars, but looked like a guy that you could plug him into any team, any system 
and he could fit in with some of the team's best players. Some moments that stand out to me early in the season, that game right before Thanksgiving against the Chicago Blackhawks, that big time comeback at home. He chipped in there. I remember that was one of his most exciting goals of the season, a one-timer to beat Morazic short side to help the Stars get back into that game. One of the best games of the season, one of the most thrilling endings uh, for a game that season. And Mason Marchman, a big part of that. I remember that. Uh, and such a key component in a lot of the big comebacks that the Stars pulled off early in the season. When he was playing in his zone and when he was at his peak, he was so fun to watch. He was really difficult for opponents to stop. He had a pretty mean shot and had the tendency to either find himself in open space and occasionally could create open space for himself. And obviously, before he came to Dallas, there was some really good things going on for him playing with the Florida Panthers. And even though he didn't have the most successful first outing with the Stars in 22-23, there's reason to believe that there can be something good and special for him here in Texas as well with the talent on the team. I think the Stars arguably have as talented, if not even more so, a roster than the Florida Panthers, especially last year compared to this year. Uh, there's plenty of really good players to surround Mason Marchment with. He obviously played with some really good players while he was in Florida with the Panthers. And so even though there were some inconsistencies throughout the first season, I think that we've seen the flashes previously in his career. But then even this season, uh, while they, the good moments came far and in between, there's plenty to like with this game. And I think there's reason to believe that there can be some more, you know, consistent success for Mason Marchment going forward. And that truly is my hope. And I know the Stars organization as well, as he's under contract until the 25-26 season, making $4.5 million each year. At age 27, you would really expect him to continue to grow and expand his game a little bit farther than what you know he got two seasons ago in Florida. Uh, you know, the 47 point season, 18 goals. You'd really like to see him start to elevate his game because he's eventually going to start aging a little bit, and his game just might not translate as well. But just again, that mixture of size—not the fastest player, but not the worst skater on the team at 6'4", 210—certainly can use his body to his advantage as well. Uh, and even though it was an inconsistent and up and down first year, I think there's reason for hope and reason for optimism uh, that we can see Mason Marchment be a key contributor to this team going forward. The flashes were there. You just need to see it a little bit more often. Well, coming up next, we'll take a turn and talk about the big areas of improvement for Mason Marchment this upcoming season. If he wants to take those proper next steps and be a key contributor to the Dallas Stars going forward. He's going to have to make a few changes in his game and also hope uh, that he can enter the season uh, with maybe a little less weight on his shoulders. We'll talk about all of that coming up next. Today's episode of Locked On Stars brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Make your way to FanDuel because right now new customers can get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win, there's no better place to bet all the sports action than America's number one sports book. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and get your no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. FanDuel is an official sports betting partner of the Locked On Stars podcast. I want to thank you again for making Locked On Stars your first listen of the day, continuing to make Locked On Stars a part of your daily routine. Thank you to each and every one of you continuing to tune in here throughout the offseason as we continue on with our player evaluation series, talking all things Mason Marchman, who did show some really nice flashes of potential of the kind of player he could be here in Dallas for his first season. But I think it is fair to say that season one for Mush in Texas was far from a success. Only 12 goals, 19 assists, and 31 points in total across only 68 games played. There was some time missed with injury, which, of course, uh, is something that you can't always control as a player. If he does get more play time, maybe those numbers do look a little bit better. Uh, but I, I think it's fair to say for a guy making $4.5 million, pretty underwhelming numbers uh, for a kid coming in uh, with some pretty lofty expectations placed upon him to be a key contributor on the top six, playing alongside a guy like Tyler Sagan, who we discussed during his player evaluation. He was looking, and still is to some extent, looking for those consistent line mates. And unfortunately, Mason Marchment was unable to be that for him through the majority of this season. 
And while I do believe that Mush could have played better on the ice, and I do think that there are some areas he can improve in that I will discuss here in just a second, I think that there were some some things happening off the ice as well uh, that probably weighed very heavy on him. Of course, this is speculation on my part, uh, but I know many of you are aware that before the season starts, Brian Marchment, Mason's father, tragically passed away uh, what early 50s. I mean, still seemingly had plenty of life left, but passed away a huge blow to the hockey community. A former player, uh, one of the most hardest hitting and most feared and respected players in the league, just in terms of what he brought to the table night in and night out, the physicality he played with, the ferocity that he played with. And I know it stung many across the National Hockey League family, including uh, literally Brian Marchment's family, Mason. Uh, I cannot imagine the idea of losing a relative, losing a loved one like that, and then having to proceed with any profession and try to focus on your job, let alone a job that is as physically and mentally demanding as the sport of hockey. So again, this is me just speculating, and I don't really necessarily have confirmation here, but I do have to imagine that there was some sort of, of just strain and, and burden likely on Marchman of having to find a way to to process things to properly mourn uh, what he had been through and I, I don't think anyone would have blamed him if he had you know maybe taken some time off or needed time off but he had just signed a new contract he was expected to be a key player uh, with the Dallas Stars so I mean I, I respect that he was able to suit up and continue to play I know his teammates and the coaching staff and the Dallas Stars organization was there for him as well as his blood family and I'm sure many others as well but I do have to think if that's something that potentially factored into all of this, I cannot imagine having to, you know, find a way to, to continue to play the game uh, while also trying to process and car- compartmentalize things that were happening off the ice, something that was beyond his control uh, and something so awful and so tragic to have happen. Uh, and I think that that probably just had to weigh on him at stretches. And, and he does, I mean, he plays a lot like his father used to back in the day. He plays with his head on fire, plays incredibly hard, plays with a ton of ferocity, but there's times where sometimes that can be his own worst enemy. As Mason Marchment did lead the Dallas Stars in penalty minutes with 80. Uh, there were so many times that he often found himself in the penalty box, unable to be out there on the ice in order to help the team. And that certainly also was not going to help your numbers from a production standpoint uh, whenever you're not able to be out there on the ice. And of course, you know, he wasn't on the top power play, so he's not getting as many power play looks or power play minutes. Uh, as you know, other guys on the team. But even when he's out there on the second power play unit, not necessarily the most prioritized weapon, uh, maybe more of a Tyler Sagan or later stages of the season, a White Johnston player was someone who was looked to a little more often on that second power play. But Mason Marchment needs to find a way to play a much more disciplined game to avoid those penalty minutes. Again, you like the way that he plays. You like the hustle and energy that he brings to the ice, looking to get under the opponent's skin and being that that kind of pesky player, almost kind of like a Tom Wilson-esque player where you can get a little bit of both, where you can get the offensive scoring production, but then you can also get a guy that can throw his body around, lay some big hits, lay some heavy checks, and make life really difficult on the opposition because they're just a, a pesky player to have to game plan against and try to strategize to beat. But Marchman also just found himself playing undisciplined at times, drawing hooking penalties, tripping penalties, roughing penalties, uh, and finding himself in the penalty box way more often than he should have. I mean, he didn't just lead the team. I think the next closest player was Yanni Hockenpah with 60 uh, penalty minutes as opposed to Mason Marchman's 80s uh, and, you know, continue to find that balance of playing hard, playing fast, playing heavy, uh, but also not finding yourself in the penalty box. Thankfully, the Dallas Stars penalty kill was one of the best in the NHL, but I think Marchman could find a little bit more rhythm in his game and, of course, you know, find some consistency in his ability to score and more time with line mates the less time that he does spend in the penalty box. And, you know, if it's true of Tyler Sagan, I think it could be true of Mason Marchment as well, that, you know, he did not necessarily have the benefit of consistently playing with the same line mates at all times. Part of that due to, you know, being injured and then having to come back and, you know, someone had maybe taken his role on a certain line. And so he's having to reposition himself, reacclimate himself with certain players or adjust to playing with new players for the first time that he really didn't have experience playing with before all of it leading to just, I'm sure, a difficult season, having to adjust to a new coach, a new system, while that coach is also adjusting to the players and personnel that he does have. So with that said, I believe there's, again, reason for optimism for Mason Marchment now that they have this first year out of the way and under everyone's belt. Hopefully, Pete DeBoer understands Mason Marchment as a player a little bit better 
uh, and can hopefully look to utilize him maybe in different ways or pair him with different players, whether that be guys that are acquired in free agency, guys that are acquired via trade. Maybe he gets paired with some prospects that come up through the Stars pipeline. I'm interested to see what the steps look like in order to put Mason Marchment in a successful position going forward because the flashes are there. We know that he can score goals. We know that he can be an effective player. I just think he's one of those players that needs to have the adequate talent around him, uh, and then he can truly find that success and hit that next level. And that's not to say that he and Sagan can't play together. I think that the key is just finding that third piece to play alongside them, and then maybe you can really get something special from that group, and you can start to see a little bit more production, and you can see Marchment finally fulfill his potential as a top six winger on this Stars roster. Well, we'll continue to dive into that conversation and talk about what year two in Dallas needs to look like for Mason Marchment if he and the team want to find continued success. All of that coming up next. Third and final segment of today's player evaluation episode covering Mason Marchment. Uh, this, Of course, this past year, his first season in Dallas. And as I discussed earlier, he has three more left in Big D under contract, $4.5 million cap hit at age 27. Plenty left in the tank for a guy who hasn't been in the NHL all that long in the grand scheme of things, made his debut in the 2019-2020 season, really kind of got his first full taste of the NHL the following year, and then broke out uh, as a really nice depth, middle six, top six player, 47 points in Florida with the Panthers, and then the Stars acquire him in free agency. Not the greatest or most consistent first season for him in Dallas, but we know the kind of player that he can be, and it's just a matter of, of finding the, the right players to play alongside and putting himself in advantageous situations, taking less penalties, playing a little bit more of a disciplined game, uh, and really utilizing his shot and scoring ability because that is something that when he's at his best, uh, he is flexing those muscles uh, and you know firing the puck at opposing goalies. Again, I keep getting drawn back to that goal against the Chicago Blackhawks before Thanksgiving, uh, but even you know I believe against the Buffalo Sabers, he had some goals. He had a really key goal late. Uh, in the final game of that series against the Minnesota Wild to give that give the Stars that extra cushion of a lead going into the second intermission. I mean, we know that he can be a clutch player. A lot of the goals that he scored at times uh, were either late in the game when the Stars needed the goal or to give them a cushion, or even that first goal in Nashville against the Predators, needing to get that first goal in the season opener. So big, especially on the road, especially against a goalie like UC Saros and beating a guy like Roman Yossi the defenseman on the ice that Mason Marchment was able to get the puck away from. I mean, we know the kind of plays that he can make by himself and with teammates. And so, I, again, I touched on it earlier, but I'm curious to see. Maybe we've made a lot of speculation about Logan Stankov and Maverick Bort coming into the lineup. Maybe uh, you put, you know, a, a Logan Stankoven or a Bork or someone else alongside Mason Marchment, and maybe you get a similar result as to what we got with Wyatt Johnston playing alongside Jamie Benn last season could look a little bit different. It might not be the exact same, but I think there is something to be said about having a you know middle-aged career veteran player playing alongside a fresh young stud rookie. And I do believe that Logan Stankoven can come in and be a stud of a rookie. Maybe that's an interesting chemistry dynamic. Maybe you look to keep him with Max Domi. Then you have two guys that certainly do carry some offensive prowess, but also like to use their bodies and hit people and get under the opposition's skin be an incredibly annoying line to play against if Marchman and Domi shared the ice. Maybe those three, maybe those two get put with Tyler Sagan if the Stars are able to retain Max Domi because uh, there were some really nice plays and nice sequences there between those three. It's really going to come down to, to both parties doing their part. Mason Marchman continuing to put in the work, hopefully coming back into this season, uh, you know, refreshed, mentally refreshed, physically refreshed and ready to play and the coaching staff doing everything they can to put him in the right spot, put him around the right players, so that way he's able to make the proper plays and help contribute to this Dallas Stars team. Uh, because obviously, the, the Jim Nill and the front office saw potential. They saw something in Mason Marchment that they liked, and they've shown that they have a track record for acknowledging and recognizing solid talent and making sure that talent is properly utilized on the Stars roster. And I think it just takes a little bit longer sometimes with certain players. And just because a player gets traded to a new team doesn't mean they have to be successful in year one. Sometimes it can take a little bit of time to work out some of the kinks. And I'm hoping that's the case with Mason Marchment, who I still have faith in. I still believe in. I'm not ready to, to 
pull the plug on Marchment's time here in Dallas, especially with how many years are left on that contract on that deal. You can't just expect everything to go smoothly. You know, the first time you get a player to a new team or even the first season, uh, sometimes you have to be a little bit patient. And I believe that is the situation that we are in here. And I'm trusting uh, that Mason Marchman is going to continue to put in the work, put his head down and buy into the system here that Pete DeBoer has in place. And he seemed to have really good chemistry with the guys on the team, enjoyed playing with the guys on the team. And it, if, you know, just observing this Dallas Stars team to show me anything. They're a very supportive group. They enjoy playing together, enjoy playing for one another, and I think that will continue to rub off on Mason Marchment as time goes on. But that is going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you so much again for tuning in and making us your first listen every single day. Be sure to subscribe to the show on YouTube. Follow us on your favorite podcasting platform of choice. Remember, we are always free and available no matter where or how you choose to listen. You can also find us on social media. Just search for the Locked On Stars podcast on Instagram and Twitter, as well as my personal Twitter account at Dane double underscore Lewis. But I hope you guys enjoy your Wednesday, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. Tomorrow.